<laughs> Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the February 1st meeting of the Hyde Park Planning Board. For those in the audience, please take note of the exits around the room. In case of mishap, and now please join us as we salute the American flag. Thank you. The first item on our agenda is a presentation by Assistant Dutchess County Executive Ron Hicks. And Ron's portfolio includes economic development and strategic planning. Mr. Hicks, welcome. Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Is this, is this working? It's working. Probably? Okay. Um, I think you and, uh, what's up? Our sound person probably would yell at you if we were broadcasting. Okay, right. good. Uh, as introduced, uh, I'm Ron Hicks, Assistant County Executive for Dutchess County, um, and I'm a resident of, of the town of LaGrange, although uh, born and raised in Hyde Park, Hyde Park Elementary, Hyde Park uh, Schools, and so it will forever, forever be my home. <laughs> but uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak before you this evening. It's a little misleading on the title here. I'm not doing a presentation, so nothing exciting and fancy. Um, <laughs> this is a subject on, on economic development and specifically about the creation of local economic development strategies. So over the next 45 to 50 minutes, He's so joking. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take about five minutes. Um, to uh, I'm going to provide you with some context, and I'll briefly tell you what I do, what we've done, and what we hope to get from each of our municipalities. Uh, in terms of what I do as assistant county executive, uh, I touch just about every component of county government, um, but focus on internal departments related to uh, economic development and uh, our strategy. So. Um, those include uh, Dutchess County Planning, Department of Public Works, Health, and I coordinate the public authorities as well as a number of our institutions, including Dutchess Community College, the Dutchess County Regional Chamber of Commerce, Dutchess BOCES, Workforce Investment Board, Dutchess Tourism, uh, and Think Dutchess. And we do this all under one economic development strategy. Uh, a number of years ago, at the outset of former uh, County Executive Molinaro's administration, we transformed the county's uh, economic development strategy and program. And y I'm sure you've heard this ad nauseum, um, but we have um, consolidated, co-located, reformed our economic development apparatus, created the Dutchess County Economic Development Advisory Council, uh, which has six standing committees to address specific disciplines uh, and the issues within them, and we created the Think Dutchess Alliance for Business. Um, my purpose before you this evening is actually one of the priorities of the Economic Development Advisory Council's Local Government Committee, which is chaired uh, in an ex officio capacity um, by the uh, representative from the Supervisors and Mayors Association. So that priority or goal of the Local Development Committee is to offer each municipality assistance with developing their own local development, uh, economic development strategy. Um, the, and, and what uh, we will do is visit each of the planning boards uh, and the city, town, and village boards uh, within our 30 uh, municipalities uh, in the county to convey the same message, which is why I'm, I'm scripting myself so that I, I share this uh, with everyone properly. Um, the county's economic development strategy focuses on business retention, expansion, and attraction. And we develop programs and initiatives uh, to support those efforts. As an example, our Pipelines to Jobs projects in partnership with Dutchess Community College, which is an initiative of the Economic Development Advisory Council's Education and Workforce Committee. Um, these projects are taking our existing assets uh, and expanding them, and, and in this case, gives our students an educational opportunity uh, and a good paying job while helping our local businesses uh, by providing a skilled workforce. Um, but uniquely in Dutchess, we do not prescribe economic development at the local level. Um, just like land use, the county defers to the local governments. We believe each community should decide what economic development means to them and what they want to see in their community. Uh, and then the county will use its resources uh, or develop new ones to support the visions and plans of the local cities, towns, and villages. So in 2023, and I'm speaking specifically about the local government committee's goals because each of the committees has their own goals, um, but the ones that have, uh, relate to the town are first, uh, this engagement um, and outreach. Second, to invite you to uh, the economic development uh, course titled 
Dutchess County Planning and Development Land Use Training Program offered through the Dutchess County Planning Federation. We did this a little bit more than six years ago, and it was very well received, so we thought we'd do it again. It'll take place on Wednesday, May 10th from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Millbrook Farm and Home Center. Uh, third, uh, we will roll out a toolkit this year for our local governments to help guide them through developing a local economic development strategy uh, if they choose to do so. Uh, fourth, uh, the committee plans to advocate for funding once again under the Partnership for Manageable Growth. This is something that we expanded several years ago, specifically for infrastructure grants, again for 2024. And lastly, we'll consider conditional approvals for incentives through the Industrial Development Agency, one of our public authorities, uh, for uses on space you choose based on job creation and investment thresholds uh, that you set. Uh, so in summary, I, I will be doing this uh, outreach uh, with uh, your town board as well. Um, you'll each get an invitation to the training program on May 10th. And beyond that, I'll ask for your awareness uh, of the recommendation to develop a local economic development strategy and your participation if the town chooses to go down that path. Um, so I know you have a long agenda, and I'm happy to take any questions. But, um, it's I a short agenda. I have. <laughs> <laughs> you have five projects and one person presenting. I heard. <laughs> um, so first, because a lot of individuals up here may not know what the Partnership for Manageable Growth is, this is a fund that was a step that was actually funded by former Ken Executive Monaro. It was the initiative, I believe, was under former Ken Executive Steinhaus. But there's two tranches of money. One is used to uh, purchase agricultural development rights or open resource protection. For example, uh, because I was on the county planning board that makes the recommendations to the legislature for the funding, we, rank, uh, we ranked, I should say, different projects that are applied. Uh, at the county is the last of the funds coming in. It starts with state ag and markets who provide funds for these purposes. Um, then it, it goes to like a land conservancy that would hold the conservation easement. Then it comes in finally to us. We had actual metrics that we had to go through and evaluate because we only had, I think, a million dollars. Um, and, but sometimes you come in with 250, sometimes 150,000, other times whatever. It just depends. Um, but we were able to preserve a lot of agricultural farmland. Mm. That noted, they don't have to stay farms. It just means that it can't be subdivided into small subdivisions. Uh, in other words, a person could say, I want to have a 100 acre property. And they could. And before we would come up with the money, we also put in, uh, <coughs> we'll say, areas for future development that were in there so it couldn't be not developed at all. And those would typically have areas where you would have, say, a farm stand or a produce stand or so, you know, whatever to, for future growth. The other part of that, though, and for open resource, I think the only thing we did was uh, park and beacon. And it can't be used for real recreation. like It's passive recreation, walking trails like that. So it's available to everybody. But the other half is for infrastructure. And Hyde Park was, has been uh, the ben beneficiary, if it's still there. I think 10 years ago, we were awarded 500000 That's part of our money to use towards sewer. Um, the other thing I just wanted to touch on, uh, Ron, was the the training session in Millbrook, this was the one that we held six years ago before. before. Yeah. I just want to point out that we had someone from the state, I think maybe Department of State, who strongly discouraged anyone from a planning board from ever speaking with an applicant except in the public at these meetings. I did not say anything, but I vehemently disagree with that because mm -hmm. offline meetings, as Ms. Leibold, everybody else here can tell you, are really valuable to advance projects. Um, but we actually had a couple of planning board members saying, I can't even speak to someone at, from the, uh, a citizen at the grocery store about this because you can't discuss these at all. You might want to vet who you get. Well, that is, that is consistent across state disciplines. We follow the code and respect the law, but at the same time, some of that encouragement that we get, we completely disregard <laughs> because they are, they are, they, we, I think we can do it much better at the local level, uh, as you can here. Um, and uh, as long as we stick to the code and follow the law, that's all that matters. Which we're following the law as well, yep. I promise, and we yep. did that. Um, questions? Mr. Garcia? No. Mr. Oliver? No, no questions. Ms. Dexter? Uh, the Dutchess County Planning Federation just met yesterday, and um, we're so excited for this kickoff course for the spring uh, series of courses. So thank you so much for w We appreciate the you effort. allowing us to do it. Yeah, really looking forward thank to you. it. Thank you. I'll here add that um, members are required to get four hours of training per year. This would count for two of them, I believe. Yep. I'm hopeful that's that you, you guys make that determination. 
Well, that, that's actually, yes, it's the chair who determines what's yes. for some reason I what, what the so. training that's is. That's what we try to do minimum yeah. 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 when we do our courses. So for all board members up here, uh, if you can mark that date, the 10th of May, uh, it's out at Millbrook, and I believe that they serve a little lunch, or, I mean dinner or something. It's the best deal around. Five <laughs> bucks gets you dinner, <laughs> coffee, and dessert. <laughs> thank you, Ann. Mr. Waters, comments? No, thank, thank you. Though. Ms. Weiser? No, nope. thanks. Okay, well, so what are the next steps that we would undertake as a planning board? Encourage our town board to adopt a local economic development strategy and help them if they so wish? I'm going to have a conversation uh, like this uh, with the town board, um, and uh, then uh, at their request, we'll come in and meet with them and uh, roll out this toolkit. Um, it really builds upon what you've already done. I mean, you have a, if you have a comprehensive plan, this takes it uh, steps further. Um, and we're also going in and testing new waters here with uh, some of these pre-approved uh, incentives, if you will, through the IDA, which they've never done before. Um, but uh, I've always felt that, you know, if someone's going to come into your house, um, that, uh, you know, you create the menu and you serve dinner, you cook and serve dinner, and uh, versus uh, coming in and forcing you Empty. This is one of the reasons why the town <laughs> on its own, or rather not on its own, but with assistance from the government's put in sidewalks, lighting, et yeah. cetera, because otherwise our code would be requiring all businesses to put those in. So this kind of helps lay the groundwork, so to speak. Exactly. Um, but we'll be happy to help in any way we can. I, I will here also add that part of Ron's portfolio has been filling up some really big, huge IBM empty buildings. Uh, if you think about it, we've kind of been, the town's been pursuing the same thing for the last 20 years, is to fill up and redevelop empty structures, because lacking the sewer infrastructure, it's hard to get new development going without it being prohibitively expensive, actually. So, Not to take up uh, too much of your time, but uh, our industrial vacancy rate when we came in was 14%. Uh, we've effectively eliminated that. Uh, we are now building on parking lots down there. Um, and our strategy, because we are at capacity and have to turn down leads, our strategy now is to focus more on our, our municipalities and uh, to uh, on our workforce, uh, which you know uh, from DCC, uh, creating those pipelines are, are very strategic and, and I think going to bear a lot of fruit in the future. So. Well, thank you. I hear a little just at for full disclosure, I am the chair of the Board of Trustees at DCC as well, so I do work with Ron in that capacity as well. Um, yeah. But that's been our big emphasis, too, is workforce development. And just had a long meeting with the president today where we have three new initiatives. You already know two of them, I believe. You'll hear the third shortly. So uh, are there any other questions? Uh, just by possibly questions from Tad or anybody from our consultants? Nope. Yes, Bonnie. <laughs> I, I guess I'll just add a thought um, when it comes to vacancy, because we tend to think of buildings. Um, but we were working with a community to the south, and it's true here that when we talk about our shopping centers and with the change in retail, we have a lot of mm. just macadam. <laughs> we just have a lot of pavement um, with a lot of overcapacity parking lots, and some of those areas can be retrofit as well. So, yeah, uh, and, and our incentives, unfortunately, at, this, at every level of government, the, there are a few incentives related to retail. And that's where we're seeing some of these vacancies. Um, but uh, what we're hoping to do is to bring uh, these, uh, like a, a, a template for strategies to the municipality so that you can follow it and decide, you know, what does this community want very specifically? What do they want? We're doing it at the airport where we are taking uh, several acres. Um, we have put ourselves through the very protracted process that uh, we put the private sector through. And uh, our goal is to, um, have someone come in and build two hangars, but we are basically doing all the permit work for them. We're creating an envelope uh, right down to the health department, and uh, I have every confidence that we're going to be able to attract two maintenance facilities there. So, you know, you could there's a number of different ways in which we've we've rolled these out um, throughout the county, uh, from large scale, like Michael said, you know, we're talking about 150 acres, um, to now we're we want to target, you know, 600 square feet. That's it, that's in a strip mall, mm -hmm. um, but that requires uh, the local support, um, and we just have to be very creative to reimagine uh, those spaces. Mm -hmm. And so what we want to do is just provide that support and to the when you develop a policy and, uh, or a strategy, and that's communicated back through supervisors and mayors or through interactions like this. You know, the county can then, within their annual budget, come up with new and creative ways of supporting them. Uh, I will tell you that the Partnership of Manageable Growth was, was expanded because when I got out of college and I was working for Duchess Tourism, one of the first meetings I came to was at High Park. 
and they were talking about sewer. And so when <laughs> I came back to this county uh, to work for Mark, we uh, found a way to expand that. And I know it's not a lot of money, but it was something, 500,000. And we've done other creative things to find ways to support, um, whether it's state programs or, or county programs, um, the initiatives that uh, we think the community wants. But when you develop your plan, then we know what you need based on your weaknesses. Uh, and then we can further develop them and, and try and fund them, so. Thank you. In many ways, just for the board certification, the okay. towns could do this with the GEIS as well. Mm -hmm. And we've discussed this with several boards over the years. Um, John, there's something called, it's there's not just a draft environmental impact statement and a final, and a supplemental, those are all when you get <coughs> deck. If you do a general, the town basically undertakes the seeker review for a range of economic options. You could say, we could, this could be a restaurant, it could be this, it could be this, and then you do all the in, uh, environmental work. But the proviso being that if one of those three comes in, you've already done seeker. So it reduces costs for developers, et cetera. But um, we never have really done that because I think it's because of lack of sewer. We tend to not know what we could actually put into those places. But these are, these are great things to encourage business in, uh, investment. We have identified funding. Uh, we are trying to find ways of, of being able to use that within the law um, on, on shovel-ready initiatives and then be able to recapture it. Because the developer would be, uh, in my experience, very happy to pay for it as long as they have that certainty that they can get in in that time uh, and it's going to save them money. Um, so uh, to have the revolver and phone, uh, fund like that uh, would just be brilliant. You just keep putting it back in and investing in other properties. Kind of like what the state does to the EDC, but <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, right. I was going to say, is this in some way, or is there a relationship with, because the, the New York State has the Shovel Ready Sites program. Is it sort of interrelated, or monies are put together? They do. They do. They do have their own program. It's competitive, mm -hmm. um, but we're talking on a much small. We're, we're going down to very small parcels here. More like um, so, uh, and and what I think we can do is we can dis we can set the rules mm -hmm. uh, here. Um, and uh, there's a lot of things that we have to do with the state um, in order to, to be creative. Um, and we push along. We've been doing it for years. Um, the EFC changed a lot of their guidance based on Ned Sullivan Mines outreach on, uh, on infrastructure grants. Um, and so did the CFA. Um, they recognize the importance upstate doesn't have the birth rate of, of infrastructure that New York City has. Mm -hmm. So um, it just takes time. Um, but I'm confident that if you have a plan and you have a desire to get something in, um, you know, we could use that, what you've codified here, uh, to bring that to the county, to bring that to the state, uh, to get grant money, to create new programs, just like the Pace Land Use Law Center, which we have right now. I think we're going to award those in the next 30 days. That was another concept that came up. We said, well, let's pay for the technical assistance that a municipality might need to get some properties further along. So um, we just take little bites out of everything here. Try to help. Thanks. Thank you, Ron. Okay. See you soon. Great. Appreciate your time. The next item on the agenda is a workshop for Justice Steakhouse. I don't believe the applicants are here tonight. Um, if everyone's had a chance to drive by, there was a slight mix-up, I will call it politely, in the building department. Uh, and if you've seen uh, Mr. Wilson, the owner of Joseph's Steakhouse, has enclosed the outdoor sort of triangle area so that it can be used during the winter because it's quite popular. Um, and somehow he got a building permit, but to get a CO, he needs to go through us. So uh, we are going to type the action tonight. Mr. Wilson will be back at the next meeting. He's in Florida, I believe, right now. Um, anybody have any questions? We're just, again, this is already done. We're trying to give. Uh, Forgiveness rather than permission to start afterwards. So, so it was something that was supposed to come to the planning board? In my opinion. Yes. Okay. And I think in Tad's, so that's why it's going to be here. Okay. But uh, at any rate, they are installed already and in, in it's, it's open, so we're just trying to get to a point where we can. I mean, if you had a chance to go by, it looks okay. It looks nice. It doesn't look bad. I mean, everybody's nice. complaining. It looks nice. <laughs> Lucky for us, yes. <laughs> um, so at any rate, if there are no other questions, and again, there's no escrow on this. Um, I believe that 
This is Ms. Weiser's yes. resolution introduced. Resolution classifying the action and referring the plan set to Dutchess County Planning and Economic Development, Joseph Steakhouse, February 1st, 2023, resolution number 2023-01. Whereas, 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 now therefore be it resolved that the planning board hereby, one, classifies the project as a type two action under CEQA. The project has been determined by New York State to have no impact on the environment and is a DEIS and a DEIS will not be prepared. Two, direct su su secretary to refer the application materials to the Dutchess County Department of Planning and Development pursuant to section 239-M of the general municipal law. And three, and sets a public hearing on the application to commence on March 1st, 2023. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The motion carries, so we will see the applicants on March 1st. We do have to refer this to county planning because it is on, obviously, 9G. And I just want to thank Cynthia for helping me write this resolution because mm -hmm. I can tell you that it took us a lot longer than it took them to read it out. <laughs> uh, and we had to go back and kind of gather a few different older resolutions <laughs> to provide all the data in there. Thank so, you. Thank you, uh, Cynthia. Yes. yes. And also, I, I, I put it in the sort of uh, italicized area just to make sure that people understood why it's type 2. Uh, when we did it. Next item on the agenda is something that's been in discussion for a while. Uh, we had some traffic and internal circulation issues. They're now back. Ms. Leibolt, <coughs> welcome. This is for Ready Coffee, applying to go into Hyde Park Town Center North. This would basically be in front of the old Grand Union, uh, which is now the Dutchess County Department uh, uh, Board of Elections uh, Extension Office. Ms. Leibolt, welcome back. Good evening. Thank you very much. Kelly Leibolt with KARC Planning. I'm Michael Berto with Michael Berto Architecture. I'll also add just for the benefit of the record and our board <coughs> members, um, our traffic consultant, Brendan Fitzpatrick of HVEA, is sitting to the left where Cynthia normally sits. Welcome. Sorry, thank you. I just wanted to get this opened. Um, I think you did a great intro. It's been quite some time since we were before you for this application. Um, I've done a lot of work with Brendan's office and with um, Pete and Bonnie, Tad, um, to try such a small project. It's like a splinter, you know, when you get a splinter, it hurts so much and it gets so much attention. But um, Actually, this dovetails nicely with what Mr. Hicks was just talking about. It does. Getting rid of some of the McAdam and the overparking. So. Yes. So this is, um, we have Jed here as well, so I want to give him a chance to come up. So this is really an adaptive reuse of this existing pocket park that we built so many years ago um, for this plaza. And we had produced a project in front of you. Um, there were some concerns about the way the orientation of the drive through and so forth were situated. So we did a lot of work um, and came up with a new plan. So let's just see if I can go through this real quick so everyone knows where this is. It's four acres, and this is in the Town Core PW1 um, district. And we're talking about the little pocket park, um, which some of it will be salvaged. You know, we're going to redo that, and that'll be the walk up um, area for people to uh, order from the uh, ready coffee. So I'm just going to jump right to the site plan. So um, I'm going to, I think I can blow this up on the other page, but obviously this is the area that we're talking about. And what we originally had. Um, was a drive through that had some stacking considerations, um, some access considerations, and we were concerned about, um, even though there isn't a property line here next to the bank, there were some concerns about traffic um, flowing back and forth um, in different directions. So I think I blew this up. Yeah, I did. So what we have now is kind of a flip-flopped orientation where um, primarily we're hoping that people use the main ingress-egress off of Route 9. So if they're northbound, they can turn right in. If they're southbound, they can left in. And they'll come into the plaza. They can left um, into this interchange and then enter into the drive through and you know, order their coffee. And when they leave, um, they can filter back through into the main part of the plaza and then out um, to Pine Woods if they want to go northbound. Or they can go back south on that main interchange if they want to go southbound. Um, we have created some parking spaces here for people who want to option not use the drive through um, And we're really hoping to create a lot of energy here with this pocket park. Um, we all know that we've built the pocket park, and I guess we can probably all count a few people that have used it. We're really hoping that this incentivizes and creates some energy there in the front, particularly in the summer and so forth. So we've completely redesigned the pocket park with landscaping and so forth. 
Um, we think this is a significant improvement. I know we've been working with Brendan and Pete on just the traffic related um, layout. We um, had moved forward and also provided you with a full landscape plan, so that's detailed um, as well by Michael Boyce. Um, Michael Berta can speak to these elevations if you want to, just briefly. We, we really haven't they made haven't changes. Cha they haven't yeah, changed. Yeah, they haven't changed. Okay, so, <laughs> so I just want to make sure everyone understands that. And then we just amended the renderings so that you could see the new renderings. We understand that there's signage on the application. We can talk about whether there's area variances for the signage, but we just wanted to show you exactly what was proposed. So if everyone remembers, this is a type two action, so it um, was deemed exempt from seeker. And so we're going to go through the site plan approval process. I think this did not go to county planning last time because it hadn't advanced um, mm. to the point that it was deemed, you know, a complete application. So um, I, it's really good. I believe that we decided that there was probably too many changes ahead to get it to county planning at right. that point. Yeah, yeah. That's right. I, I don't because I don't see a resolution that we took we took for this. Uh, but at any rate, so just to highlight a couple of things, can you go back to the site plan? Absolutely. I have to walk up there. Um, <laughs> this might be easier to see, and I can blow this up. Because we don't have a big set of plans. I. The, yeah, the landscaped island for the spit for the parking also, spaces. I know you want to avoid the DOT, so I'm trying to figure out a way to discourage that left in there. Mm-hmm. We're not going to yell at him. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I think there were some items um, that will be contained in a memo, but they were discussed at the workshop um, collectively. Uh, one was whether um, it was just an omission, but there appears to be curbing adjacent to the Dutchess County uh, building where there's some landscaping in there right now. And the way it was shown on the site plan, it suggested that that was going away. Um, and when, one of the questions was, well, you know, why um, did it need to be revised? So see where you have the green strip? Oh, here? Yeah, yeah and there it looked like. It says curbing to be removed on it. Yeah. So I think what it is is the curbing, it's, the arrow probably intended to mean right here the curbing is to be removed. But, With that um, walkway space? Maybe, yeah. 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 I think that's, that's what it's intended, but we can clarify right. it. Because yeah. we don't want to have people driving. Right. <laughs> no, well, there is a break here. There's a break here, but no, and there's a pedestrian right. break right. right here. That's right. It. But the rest of it should be curbed. Yeah, and yeah. we didn't think there were changes being made, so it was there a little. Be. Yeah, so. Well, you, you originally are had confusing, right? too. I mean, right. Joe's. Sorry. Sure. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> Joe's, Joe's got different color, like line weights, and yeah. that was. We're not really sure yes. what, like, the yellow okay. is, what the. I mean, is whatever so sure it needs to be <laughs> cleaned up understood clarified clarified yep. that's a great word um the we did talk about the removal of those parking spaces where they'd be backing into essentially a lot of the traffic coming in and circulating around um it didn't appear that it was you know, really necessary um in that particular location and that the area specifically actually be used for additional landscaping um you know that would be the desire uh, the other was there was some discussion, and, and maybe HVA um, dealt with it already, but there was a question whether or not, as you come in through the main entrance, that people are going to make a left, and would it be sort of an odd cue where people are coming making a left off of the main entrance, and then making sort of another immediate You're left? Right here. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And so there was a question about should the other access point really be the focal point as far as the entrance to circulate around and I don't know if that was addressed or not um, or if it was given some thought it, yeah I, I think we did comment on that a little bit and I think just to go back to uh, 
Kelly's overview. I think, you know, when we first looked at this project, one of the concerns was uh, the entrance at the bank is big and wide. It is intended to be, a, a, you know, a right-in access, but it's wide. And the way the, the previous drive-through was configured, it would have lent itself into people taking left-hand turns out of the left turn lane to get into the drive-through as quickly as they could. So, um, you know, some of that led to this, uh, the redesign, which I think, uh, you know, is going is to be beneficial to that, where, um, you know, cars are going to be able to come in and get right into that queue. Uh, in fact, really coming in the main entrance is going to be the fastest way to get there. Um, I think there's also, you know, the, the, uh, <coughs> the sort of north-south uh, plaza road, you know, that, that's sort of a feeder road for all the plaza, for the plazas, yeah. McDonald's and everything in there. And so I, I, I think the, you know, there's a, there's a sort of a dual benefit in that it makes the, the location of, even though it's, a, you know, maybe, a, you know, again, we're trying to retrofit this existing condition, but uh, in trying to get traffic off of Route 9 and into the site efficiently so that they don't, so that, you know, in, inappropriate or, uh, you know, illegal maneuvers aren't, aren't done, having it in this location is, is beneficial for that. And then I think keeping that traffic off of that main north off south. Off the feeder road. Off yeah. the feeder road is also advantageous too, because that's going to create, a, if you were going on that road and then having to take a left into the site, you're now conflicting with yeah. not just the, the, the traffic that's going into Ready Coffee, but all the traffic that's also using the plaza, trying to head south into the plaza and, and, and so on. So, um, and I think from that, and you know, we, we also did think that, you know, looking at that entrance, anything that we can do to make that, uh, less attractive to make a left in at the bank. Um, I don't know how much that movement, you know, occurs now, but uh, I think you have some striping there. Um, yeah, so this is just for everyone's perspective. This is the right of way line. So that's the property line. Um, so what we can, we have talked about doing, I think we talked about um, this with you, Pete, earlier too, is perhaps just enhancing this curb. That's what I was saying. And changing yeah. this radius, and then that might help. These spaces are actually really important to us, and we think that it helps create kind of a nice little area here where people can get out and park and walk. You know, we've created a crosswalk here where they can walk up to the patio. We really want to encourage that use of this patio. And if we can enhance this and possibly curb that, to avoid that intersection there, then then maybe that flow works better. Yeah, I think that we also did make the recommendation of, of trying to eliminate that parking, just because there is there's, there's several streams of traffic that are there. Um, the other, I think the other thing with the crosswalk, um, it would be ideal if that crosswalk was in front of the stop bars, not behind it. Um, so I think that's another little sort of site plan issue that's a little problematic. Um, it would be better it, it, if if those five spaces became an island, uh, you, you'd have more flexibility in being able to lay out, uh, lay out that sidewalk and lay out the crosswalk. And then you could actually you know, position it in a more traditional way of having the crosswalk in front of the stop bar. Because uh, in this configuration, um, you know, someone, someone could actually be at the, st or cars could be at the stop bar waiting to exit and, uh, and blocking the crosswalk. So I think that's not, you know, that's not very advantageous. Um, to promote that, you know, that, that kind of circulation that you're talking about, which I think is, you know, good. Um, we did look at, uh, you know, just looking at the other sites, uh, the Ready Coffee sites um, around the Hudson Valley, um, you know, certainly one uh, characteristic that was um, consistent between all of them is they, they, you know, not only did they did have some parking that was close, which you're proposing now, uh, which I think is, again, another improvement uh, from the last plan. But that one of those one of those parking spaces be uh, be handicap accessible. Um, so maybe the one you know closest to the building uh, could be handicap accessible. For the seven you're referring to, that for the seven that are by the queue, yeah. the yeah. seven spaces. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I think in terms of the, the overall plan, there's just going to be some comments in terms of some of the details. So for instance, we want to make sure that the stone wall that is being you know, renovated is, is uh, you know, built in kind or it's reused. And I think that's the intent. It we is. just need the details kind of fleshed out a little bit more. So the intent was that that stone, <laughs> the, the construction was supposed to occur at the same time that this occurred and BOE occurred. And we were going to use that same stone in front of BOE. So we ended up having to buy a new stone in front of BOE. So this stone that's here would be completely reused for, for that, that symbol. But we can note that. Great. Thank you. Mr. Sotero, comments? Um, well, I think uh, 
while we're still on traffic, I think one of the things we talked about at our uh, agenda call last week was uh, people coming out of the drive-through, if they want to go north on 9, that they would cut through, you know, the bank and just make the turn around the bank and go, like, northbound. So uh, we talked about, I don't remember how, you know, we left it, but uh, did, did there need to be an agreement with the bank for that maneuver? Because well, you know it's going to happen. To that. One, one of the things that you add into our comment letter is, you know, I thought there could be some refinement of the of the drive-through exit and uh, you know and, and the escape lane, where it could get ske skewed a little bit um, to the east, uh, and uh, you know e even if we actually put in uh, one of those the flow arrows, put a right turn flow arrow, so that it, you know it, it, you're you're actually pushing traffic to use that east access point and not and not go around the bank, because um, I think uh, you know it's a, it's a twofold thing. You, you want you know if someone was going to go through and take a, a, a right, you don't you don't want them to also go into the bank uh, or go out the bank exit and then make that uh, you know that prohibited left turn out onto Route Nine. So it's just a way you know it could be fairly subtle just you know with those curb lines so i think it just put a right turn a right turn arrow on the ground a, yeah right turn yeah. arrow and then just very subtly you know adjust the curb so that when a car exits they're in that position to drive right you know right to the access the the uh, or the east exit there okay um the only other thing kelly that uh you know that i had again um you know we're just looking at some of the minor engineering things um we'll issue a, a memo but just um, if Joe could add a bunch of top and bottom of curb, curb elevations to make sure that, you know, the drainage is um, sure. flowing to where it's supposed to go. He shows a couple uh, a new catch basins with a pipe that's tied, uh, like, directly into an uh, you know, existing pipe without uh, a structure. Okay. That's not really, like a good, you know, they're like minor things. So um, I don't really have that much, um, Brendan and, like, Bonnie are covering you know the main things okay. but i'll i have like a draft memo i'll issue that but it's minor okay. stuff okay ms moss comments thank you mr fitzpatrick do you have other points you want to raise um I think the only uh, additional comment I would add is, you know, I, I, you know, I think just for sort of due diligence and to have a complete record, uh, you know, for the file, it, um, you know, there's the, the traffic indicated the, you know, amount of uh, cars that would be coming in and coming out during those peak hours. Uh, I think that could get uh, enhanced a little bit to just show the distribution. I mean, you know, obviously Route 9 is going to be the primary feeder. And this isn't, you know, m most of it's not newly generated traffic. It's, you know, uh, d diversion traffic that's already out there. But some of it's going to be coming from Pinewoods Road and some of it from Route 9. It would be good to actually sort of outline what, it, you know, what your traffic guy believes that distribution is, even if it's just based on, you know, the, the gravity model of the flows that are there. And then, you know, the only, the, the critical well, 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 Do you want to describe what a gravity model of the flows that are there just, is? Sorry. Just a, uh, just looking at the overall traffic volume. So if, you know, if there's, uh, you know, 20,000 cars on uh, Route 9 and 10,000 cars on uh, Pine Woods, you would, you know, you, you would expect twice as many cars to be. Oh, God, well, there's not 10,000 cars on Pine Woods. <laughs> I know that much. Okay. <laughs> but we Thank did, you. we did speak with Phil Greeley, who's the engineer on our side, and he had no issues with doing okay. that distribution. And then the other thing related to that is that really, the, you know, the critical movement here is the left-hand turn into the plaza. So. Again, it's it, it it's not new traffic on Route Nine, but the, these are new movements that are going to occur to go into the drive-through at the coffee place. So just looking at that, um, you know, and again, even if even if uh, the, the DOT ever did come back to want to make sure that the, the town did its due diligence, that's the critical movement. So that left hand, that left hand in during those peak hours should get analyzed. And you know, just looking at the the traffic on Route Nine and what you guys are estimating to be your peak hour traffic, a, a simple capacity analysis for that left turn in, just to show mm -hmm. that it's a high level of service. Okay, so based on existing conditions, not going out and doing counts? Uh, it, it, well, it's, it, I, think you can, I think you can base it on the information that you that's have. That's available. Or, or that's yep, available. readily available. Yep, okay. Um, board by diversionary, uh, there's, when you do traffic analysis, there's unique visitors. 
There's people who said, I'm going to go over to Ready Coffee. And then there's ones who are already driving who would say, hey, I liked Ready Coffee last time I was there. Let's pop over there quickly. So that's why there's an analysis of both. Um, we haven't had a lot of traffic. We have new members. We haven't had a lot of traffic analysis lately. That's why I said this. Okay. And you can even see there just looking by yourself. <clears throat> there's more queuing toward taking a left into the main entrance, as you're calling it, the main ingress, egress, and there is. There's, it's your, the distance from the light at Pine Woods is much uh, further away, so you don't have the chance of backing up within the middle of an intersection, I should say. That's an odd intersection because it's not a four-corner intersection at Pine Woods, Fuller, and Route 9. So that's the goal is to try to direct all the left traffic, if you can, inside. And it was me who actually, before I called the board, it was me who thought about closing that other entrance up there because when I looked at it, the queue is not that far in, and if, it was, uh, if there were all really those cars there, you could have a little conflict area in that area, but if Britain thinks it. it's fine, yeah, if Britain thinks yeah. it's fine, then I'm fine with it too, because you know you don't want to force all the traffic around coming back yeah, the other way. Yeah, then forces it on the feeder yeah, road. Yeah, because that then that speed feeder roads is used is used by the Pinewoods uh, drivers to get over to other parts of the secondary plaza as well, and you don't want to block that for business purposes. So, okay, with all that being done, uh, yes, Bob. I, I was just going to say that when the plans approved, you could consider an option that this is the way it's approved. But if there's a problem with that circulation, then there could be like a plan B, where somehow you know, to the extent that's needed, you could close it off if you had to, you know, when you really do get the opportunity to see the flow. We'd have to defer to Victoria to figure out how to make that trigger happen, et cetera. But um, I believe that's probably what the applicants would like to hear as well, um, is to see what the situation is later on. So we'll see. Yeah. <laughs> At any rate, uh, anything else from the consultants? I think that's it. Let me start to my left. Ms. Weiser, comments? I think that our consultants and Tad have covered everything really, really well. All of your points here, Tad, is wonderful. And I, think, and I also do agree that the uh, five um, spaces should be uh, or not needed as well. But other than that, I think it's a great project. Thank I'm you. looking forward to it. Thank you. Mr. Waters? Yeah, it's the same uh, the uh, professional talent that we have uh, have done the best with this. This is a it's it's a little tricky because I'm, I'm, I'm concerned about the circulation of it. Um, but like I said, it is it has turned out better than it was originally so um, and uh, the five spaces again you'd be backing basically I could see that as a real problem because you, you can have you have in and outflow on that too and somebody backing out of that I, you know the seven spaces the same the same issue of people come offline on that you know the, the you know somebody backing out of those seven spaces that could even be an issue um, but, but they back into the escape but, lane, right? Yeah, yeah. Call the, what we call yes. the escape lane. Yeah, sorry. I mean, it, it, you know, I mean, every, everything is so tight. It, it, that's the that's the thing. It's yes. not like I'm being a, you know, uh, against no, I, the I project. Understand. I'm just concerned about the traffic flow. I'm, yeah. I'm concerned about pine woods backing up even, because you know I've seen that these the you know the coffee places get pretty busy. So, you know, that also coming down and then turning, uh, making a, a left onto uh, Route 9, if people come out Pine Woods, because that gets jammed up with anyway. just a little traffic yeah. there. So that, that's, that's the concerns. I wish they would use the main traffic light, but, you know, getting people to go in a little bit further and, and being safer, that doesn't always happen. People want quick, you know. So, the, you know, in general, it's, it's fine. Uh, the structure looks great. Um, so I don't have a problem with yeah. anything except for my concerns about the flow. And that's, that's the big thing. We've spent a lot of time on that. Yeah. yeah. I think we've gotten to the point where the, we think that this is the best for the plaza, the best for the project. Yeah. You know, Jed and I spent a couple of hours out there one day just walking and walking and walking, and he's uh, very... Uh, informed on traffic circulation and so forth and so he came up with this idea and I think it's a great plan yeah, well, it'll never be perfect because it's an infill it's, um, it's, yeah. it's so, a tight spot yeah. and you're trying to do a lot with vehicles that's the, that's the thing if it was just the structure it'd be fine but you have a lot of flow yeah and it's constantly moving it's constantly turning so that's 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 the concern I have so 
Thank you, Robert. Ms. Dexter? You guys have done a lot of work on this, and I really appreciate it, because this is a very difficult site. Um, I like the landscaping. Thank you. Um, I like the I like the, the frontage on Route 9. Um, I can see people hanging out there. Yes. Um, the addition of the trees, I think, helps with Agree. that. Yeah, um, it didn't have trees before. Right. If, if, if it had just had one shade-giving tree, that might have been better at the old place. So um, can, you t can we talk a little bit about the bank and, like, where they're – are they sitting on a square? Is there yeah, a, is this there is their property line. So it, it, that is, the, the that square, is, right? Yeah, right mm. there. That's okay. their property line. And, and, they and I know through the years it's all been shared. It has. And right. they've been very supportive. So yep. we've spoken with them at length. Nick Cetera has a great relationship with them. They're very excited about this. I think we forwarded emails to um, Pete and maybe to Brendan that they're very excited and they're uh, hopeful that this project comes through. That was their response, is that they look forward to seeing it built um, because any additional businesses is of course benefits other businesses you know there's synergy here yes. and i think there was a lot of um vacancy in this plaza and it's come back to life oh it's yeah. i mean compared so with 15 better. years ago yeah. Oh, yeah it's uh it is it's gorgeous and um yeah it's well on its way so my concerns continue to be with the traffic flow i and i really do appreciate what you've done here um so I drive down Route 9 every morning and every afternoon, and I see some really crazy traffic <laughs> um, activities. Um, the one that I've been seeing more of lately, because I believe now that COVID, the COVID era is over, um, traffic flows are back at their peaks. So when I go by north in the afternoon at like 5, 5.30, People are hopping off Route 9 down both the, um, the double uh, entryway into the plaza and the bank entryway, and they're gassing it, and they're beating, yeah. they're yeah. beating the light. Yeah. And they're going around and going through, and they're going up, and they're going on to Pinewoods Road, mm -hmm. and ha, 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 all those people have to sit there at the light, and they're, and they're dumb because look what I'm doing. And every time I see that, I'm like, what is going to happen when – I've got something there that's that everybody wants. It's very popular. Are they going to stop doing that, yeah. or are we just have we just now guaranteed that there's now going to be something not good happening? Whether it's a more vehicular accidents or pe there's pedestrian interaction now, um, but it's that's human behavior, yeah. and I don't know how you. I don't know how you design for the people who are looking to beat the system. Well, you'll never be able to do that. You can't. Yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, you guys have done a really good job because you've gotten rid of that where they could cut in anywhere yeah. and kind of get into the queue. You are forcing them to basically. It might be a positive in the sense that that <laughs> there will be vehicles in there now. It'll so be occupied that's, space. that's what I was going to say, and, and I would defer to Brendan because he can probably talk about this better than I can. But we all know that once you have, a, you know, you have a vacant space and then you have a developed space, that people pay more attention to it, mm. and also more energy, more people, more vehicles, and so forth. They mm -hmm. tend to not. Cut well, we've had there. this conversation with Belfield. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. You're driving down Main Street now. You've yeah. got all the angled in parking, and Correct. people are going to go slower yes. because. You don't know There's, who's going to pop right. out. Correct. You don't know. And so it is a traffic calming measure when you suddenly have all of these, you know, vehicles and people and so forth at the same time. Um, I think that I've seen it, and so I think that it's going to stop. That's my personal opinion. But you know, can we assure you of that? No, no, no. And I, I, that's. I, I'm I just, think it'll help. I'm just voicing my concerns because I, I see my fellow human beings not being good they're idiots not, yeah, yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> exactly very good point every every site we've developed so far has been an empty concrete eyesore where people would cut across it at 40 or 50 miles an hour Perfect example. and now nobody knows that because there's something there people care for it when it's there if it's empty if it's abandoned they don't people care. will cut it. and i agree i agree but i just wanted to bring that up as being my observation and and why i'm still like I, I can't like go yay. The other thing I've noticed, um, and that is again with the human, is how crazy people are for coffee. Mm. They are just insane. 
I go down, we, we, we had the Dunkin' Donuts in front of us years ago, and we gave them a 20-car stacking thing that still piles out onto Route 9 on a Saturday morning at 11 o'clock. It's like, oh, come on, please, guys. And there's nobody inside. There, yeah, there's nobody inside. There's nobody inside. That's because we, Maybe this you, will change it. No, that's because you have to back out into that queue yeah, to park. Yes, it makes it very yes. difficult there. Well, there are also, adding. and of course, Jed can speak to this, but each you know, uh, different company has different queue speeds at which they're mm -hmm. able to... Oh, okay. Well, yep. Dunkin' Donuts has so more products that they have to sell. Yes. And, and they have food they need to That's prepare. Their yeah. cycle it's food times stuff. are yeah. about three times longer than ours for each. And what amazing me, it, people will sit there. They will sit I there know. for 40 minutes <laughs> rather than just drive like next door, get out of their car, walk in and get it, it, and be done in five minutes. So anyway, I see that activity too and I'm like, uh, you know, okay, so maybe having another coffee place will help that. Um, but it's just my observation that people are crazy for coffee. Um, and and so I, I'm just I, I'm trying to resolve my my concerns with safety and traffic. And I do appreciate Brendan that you you bring a lot to the table here. And as we were talking, I'm like, then don't get rid of those five spaces because if they are going to introduce a traffic calming point, mm -hmm. then do that because. That's the easiest way for a handicapped person to get out of their car and go across that curb and get to the window. I was actually just going to use your last statement for why we really do want to keep those parking spaces. So we want to have available parking where people can get out and they can walk up. And the whole concept is cr to create this sea of asphalt and slow everything down. And so we, you know, we'd like to discuss options of, and I think that we can come up with something to show how we could keep those spaces there. Um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not really against them because I feel like you're basically saying that Ready Coffee needs 12 parking spaces for a 400 square foot building. But I don't well, think that's. I'm not saying that. I what I see. Can I just? Five. But, but you I, have seven dedicated. But what I also see. Can I just? Yeah, but the ones can, on the let inside me, are let me a continue. Hard to get to. Um, is that there are a lot of bank people that park in what where those spaces were. Um, granted, it's not like there's ever 20 cars there or anything, but they they do park where they're, you're taking away spots to get over to the ATM. A lot of them park right there in the entry aisle. Yeah, I've seen that. Um, I think that'll end. Um, and, and again, when you look, there are people with walkers and canes, and they want to be right there next to the ATM. And I'm like, all right, so you're, if, we, if we make that as like, tight, like I can't turn in there because there's that tight person there trying to get to the Back ATM. Up. Yeah, I, so I'm, again, I'm, I'm thinking shared parking too. Right. Of course. Yeah. So, I don't know. I I like the five spaces there more than I like the seven spaces on the interior. Okay. So if I had to pick, yeah. And so, and one other thing to add on to this is that if someone sees eight cars in a line, what they'll start to do is they'll start to use that walk-up window, and the easier those parking spaces are to use, the better. And so those five along the edge there, I think are I think the town. I personally believe everyone would be sorry if we didn't put them there because they have these multiple benefits and it, it essentially will give any visitor the option of parking and using the walk-up window and if there's a line if you're worried about the, the line stacking people people will see that and they'll they'll cheat the line by parking and coming to the walk-up window just gives people more options and the more fluid we can make those options, the better, basically. Yeah. Does it have to be five? Could you, if, if you pair it? does it not have to be five, no, Robert. I, I, I agree one should 12, be. 12 parking spaces is way over parking for a building this size. I want to keep saying that over and over again. And not everybody in town will be upset if you lose the five spaces. There are at least three people up here who wouldn't be. Well, the five are the most usable. The seven on the inside require. Yeah, perhaps I don't perhaps those are the ones that don't need to be there. Them. Perhaps those are the ones that don't need to or be you, there. Or you re reduce them. What's it? Um, perhaps you don't need to have those seven there, though. You, we can, I think collectively, I, those yeah. spaces, it sounds like it would behoove us to give you, we'll take some second uh, look at that and see what we can do to try to accommodate some of the, the queuing that Brendan, or the uh, interference that Brendan brought up and that you had brought up. And also the handicap space is a, is a good point, so we'll lose one space for loading. So we can, we can revisit that. What about, uh, I know on our call the other day, um, Victoria had mentioned when we were talking about those five spaces about a couple parallel parking spaces. No. 
maybe that's something that you could consider or even you know, like angular parking instead of you know like 90 90 degrees yeah I don't so know. if they're yeah we could look at that and see maybe but, it's easier but Pete, for if you do that then you ruin the chance for the person who's coming in off pine woods who wants to park there from like mm -hmm. popping in and just parking oh, yeah, in that's there because right. yeah. that's a two-way right there You also have this direction still coming in too. Yeah, I mean, so it, again, kind of embracing the if the some, if something's dynamic and people will slow down. Well, maybe maybe there is a way. You know, look 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 at utilizing that space the best way you yeah. can for yep. parking and pedestrians. Because again, I don't think the crosswalk is situated well. Yeah, for and we can we can maybe make some adjustments there. right and, and and maybe you know maybe it's maybe it's adjusting these seven spaces or somehow even realizing another space out of that somehow where you know it's it, it, it's it, it it lends itself to some improvement but i think yeah you know i mean i think the interconnect between the bank and the plaza is important for itself too just even for people using the bank or not having to come back out onto route nine or, or pine woods um so you know I, I, and again it just you know we have you have two directional traffic you have people that are going to be looking to back out of a space while people are, are, are yeah. coming through uh, the escape lane and uh, you know and the drive-through. So there's a lot happening there. They, can they, I, can they I do still have also the spaces that are up against the main aisle. What about, so. so typically we run our crosswalks to, to, this, to the back here. And that's because any of the cars queued up here are, are basically stopped. And even if they're not stopped, they're going two miles an hour. Right, so that's usually a really safe place to come across. What if we, I'm just thinking out loud, what if we eliminate this parking space, run the sidewalk here, and cross um, back there? The law for ADA spaces, it has to be closest to the uh, building entrance as possible. Um, but could the ADA it'd just be your next, it'd just be your next one. one. It'd just yeah, be your next, next one, two. in other words. Yeah, just be your next one. And then they could immediately get across. But I guess what I'm wondering is, and just thinking well, I think, about it, I, I think it, like uh, you know, it, 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 better than being in front of the queue. Like right now, that the crosswalk mm -hmm. is right in front of the queue, but also behind the stop bar. So you're at a spot where someone's trying to move. You know, if, if you're if you're in the in the area where the traffic is queued and you know stopped in the queue, and 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 it's it's properly you know marked such that they're not going to block that the path. That's better than having it where it is now. I think still ideally, you know, you're best having it. In, in front of the in front of the traffic control, which would be in front of the, in front of the stop bar. Yes. Yeah, so um, we just think though to have it in front of the stop bar, then you've got that the people coming in off of Route Nine and that conflict there. So if we bring it in the back, then at least it's you know the pedestrians are better protected. Way out of the way. At yeah. That point. Right. So like I, like I said, I think there might be some coffee. way you can reimagine that that triangular <laughs> space and that parking to you know maybe not have uh, you know uh, whatever's there twelve spaces, but you know maybe you can fit something else in there that you know that, that, that could serve all these purposes that we're talking about Kelly, does yes. the agreement with the bank contemplate any shared parking or, i mean are those five spaces intended to serve the bank no there is the agreement is really for um common area maintenance and access so it's a very um, simple agreement yeah it really is we tried not to get too complicated yeah. and it works for both sides um Again, we send these plans to the bank, and their response was, can't wait to see it. They'll have to sign the application form because you show improvements on the bank side. I think what right, we're going to do bank, is... It's a credit union, Yeah, so. we were... I think I was talking to Tad about this, is that we're just going to have an authorization from them. Yeah, if that's, which is yeah, fine, we'll too. We'll just get an authorization yeah. letter. Do you want a separate sheet above? We'll get, it, we'll get something... What the final design looks like and what oh. that and we can get something on their letterhead that says that they authorize the application. And Victoria, I'm sorry, you were behind Cynthia's head. I forgot to call on you. Do you have any comments? <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> uh, at this point, I mean, now that we're talking about Okay, sorry. Okay. Anne. And then well, I just had one final question, and that's the, um, the curbing that's currently in front of the, and I know we've kind of talked about this, but I kind of got lost, and it's hard to see. Um, the curbing that's in front of the, the Board of Elections that's solid, right now you are talking about removing that so that there's a break a break within an hour yeah there's a little break right here but yeah that, right for that's pedestrians teeny. Yep. to come through yep. right. and if it was the arrow was the wrong way it, it shouldn't have been but that's the only break is right here right just so that those pedestrians can go through there Oh, so you are not removing any more of that? No. Well, oh, okay. But yeah, it'll stay. The plans well, I thought yeah. originally. But the new entrance. Here there is. Right, that some, is a break. Right. Yeah, there's some removed here for the vehicular crossing. So that is being removed? Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. I'm just 
just trying to. I thought that when you had your discussion, it sounded like in your agenda meeting that someone thought that all of this yes. was being. Yes. I don't know. I think it was. was we there was a line yeah. color. So that's what people all attend discussing right. the agenda meeting. So I don't. So there's two areas of curbing that's going to be removed. The first area is right here to allow that break Vehicular. onto the main feeder road. And then there's a small area here that will be broken and repaired so that there's a pedestrian crossing. So if someone were in front of Board of Elections, hopefully sitting on the beautiful wall that we built and wants to grab a <laughs> cup of coffee, they can walk across and get a cup of coffee. Right. Okay. All right. So thank you for um, bearing with me as I... Thank you, man. Mr. Oliver, comments? So first off, um, I think the whole plaza is looking beautiful, and I think this building and use is going to be great for the space, and, and I like what you guys are trying to do. And it is a very difficult site to make work, so I appreciate all the work you guys are doing. Thank you. Um, my two comments are, well, actually maybe three. <laughs> for the crosswalk that um, has been in discussion, near the uh the window where does it go because it just kind of like ends well we actually were sitting here and we realized that it actually does end it does it to nowhere. yeah okay. so moving it would be a better option thank you for pointing that out and yeah. moving it back here we want to get it over it's intended to go to the patio okay um i'm not sure if it would be possible but if you could bring that curb line where the black arrow is right there um, in, here uh, oh up here Right where that crosswalk comes sure. across, yeah. where, yes. the, where that right entry is, yes. if you could bring that curb and kind of choke that down yes. out to meet the other curb. Oh. Is, Are you talking about right here? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Is that possible? Wait, where? I can really see it. That's what I thought. That's, that's, what I, that's what I had suggested. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I'm bringing it out to me. So yeah. we're talking about expanding this curve out yep. this way, yep. right? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? You just yeah. like North. sharpen that angle. Yeah. Or, you know. Um, so it's more like this than this. So it's teed up with the corner. Right. For the other island. Yes. And then bump the crosswalk out so that it's right along the edge mm -hmm. and line up the, the stop bars mm -hmm. or signs or however you're going to do the signage. And then if you maybe eliminated one parking spot there, closed off that other entry so you carry traffic through the through road, um, and then add a spot or snow storage over there. The reason why we didn't carry this over is because this is the property line. And so we needed to maintain some means of egress legally on this property. And so that's why it didn't come over. But you could still extend it north some. We can extend it. Yeah, I think we you, can. Because your access, basically, your agreement says we can both drive each other's property and we have to maintain it. Yeah, this we extent. can carry That's, this out. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Or if you just try to get them to line up line a little up. more. Yep. That's right. Even, even if you look to eliminate one of the, you know, some maybe one or two of those parking spaces, you could trim that, you know, trim it back. Uh, and, and then, you know, and then just have a smooth alignment to get back into the, uh, you know, into the exit line. And even, you know, if you really do need the, the spots, if you close that one area and put one, one or two over there, that would eliminate that close queuing issue. Area. The spotter in front of Mavis. Over here? Uh, keep going. Keep going. Oh, close this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We definitely, we, the reason why it's important to keep that is because if we close that, everything that comes in off of Route 9 then goes onto the feeder road and then comes in. So we kind of contaminate That's this area. Main. Okay. Because I, I was thinking it would almost make more sense for it to all go to the feeder road because it's designed for that. Like there's more that was my That was my right. first thought too. Right. And in fact, that in itself is also almost like traffic calming. Because yeah. now they're making the laps there. But that's sort of a cardinal sin of drive throughs is to feed the traffic through a main travel aisle. Because um, I, I was just thinking about the traffic, how it backs up on Route 9. You know, you get somebody, every time you see an opening, like if you go into a, a plaza, right, and you, you have aisles, and then there's an opening, you go through that first opening before you go to the end to make your turn. Yeah. So I'm just thinking if you have a, a curb cut and then a feeder road, and somebody sees they can scoot right through there and then scoot back and you have other cars. I just, I'm just thinking if you can reduce the amount of two-way traffic, you may be able to. Two-way traffic on which part? You well, you have two, you have, I think in theory, kind of two feeder roads next to each other. You know, you're running parallel to each other. 
in you know if you look at it from a larger scale and you you can have two through roads in theory somebody could make that first left and go go through the stop sign and keep going so you're running parallel to your feeder road so I understand that but I would argue that anything negative that might come of that is dwarfed pretty massively by the converse of that, which is us putting our traffic on that feeder road, on what we call a main travel aisle. Don't, don't you see traffic backing out onto the feeder, onto the turn that's going to hit Albany Coast Road, where it becomes yeah. more of a problem? No. No. If they can't get in and make the left, then won't it back up there? And what, also, what size, what size vehicle did your model use? There's a lot of trucks here. <laughs> well, they're standard cars. That I don't know what they are, the, the design for the car, the width. You know. well, I mean, because what you're showing in your queue, I want to know if that's what size vehicle you use. Are they compact? Are they trucks? Are they because that will change the number of cars you get very well. I believe they're um, 18 foot long. Yeah, yes. Okay. They're, they're a, standard, a, standard, a standard passenger car. Again, I, I love the project and, and I know it's a difficult site. I'm just honestly looking at it with logic, trying to see the, the best use. And I understand from a, a business perspective, you have needs that need to be met and I get that. Not a business need, it's a, um, a respect of how people circulate around a, a Fair enough. and the need to keep main travel aisles clear. Yeah. One, one thing I'll add, I mean, when we had some uh, earlier discussions, you know, one of the things we did ask them to do is to go look at the, you know since, since we have this real life model in these other yep. at least three facilities within the Hudson Valley, um, so they did go out and and, and, and look at those uh, during the peak hours and, and look at the queues, so you know and, and I think you know I think one of one of your sites had more traffic but a queue of like eight, so I think you know in, in terms of uh, in terms of them being able to balance what they know about their facility and and how they pr process cars. Um, you know that, that that's why th this can work with that queue. Uh, that you wouldn't see it just keep backing out. And again, if, if it was if if the queue is full when someone pulls in, uh, takes this left in, then th they're going to do they're going to bypass it and abort, or they're going to maybe find a parking spot, uh, or you know maybe wait wait a, a few seconds to see if it, if it opens up. But they're 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 now we asked them to update that because even uh, I think it was done you know before or around COVID time things have changed now even more people are going through drive throughs so they did update that they did update that and update that data uh, so that we were looking at something that was current at what's happening right now and you you don't see an issue with the redundancy of having in theory like a well, two through yeah, roads? The, the, I, I think I understand what you're saying. I think here, if, if someone was going to choose to make a left-hand turn to go back onto the feeder road, they're choosing to make two traffic movements mm -hmm. as opposed to the one. Right. So if you, go to, if you go to the feeder road and make the left, you're on the feeder road. If you take a left at this aisle and then take another right and another left, you just, you just take in one move, uh, three movements to make one. So it's not really attractive in that manner. Okay. Uh, so I, I wouldn't, uh, and and I, I do think that you know it, it, it's uh, you know looking at the other sites that were developed with this uh, with this ready coffee model, uh, you know this, this one's a little bit different because it's in a, it's the other ones are more positioned in in areas of uh, you know parking lots that were kind of uh, uh, in the corners, but you know this it, it, it's going to be you know people are going to get to know this as mm -hmm. that that's what this quadrant is for. Okay. I mean, the, the Newburg site is kind of a free for all <laughs> because kind there's of. it's like in the middle of a you know vacated at least at that time, um, you know uh, empty uh, you know convenience area and the one over in Wappinger is sort of the same as well. That's a big. That's a much bigger parking lot than what this is. Yeah, and that, and again, I don't think it's really. It's not. This is being like finely tuned to be right. channelized, you right. know, and to yeah. really. My, my only reaction as far as that main entrance is that it's it's can't be more than a, a, a few I don't know a hundred feet 50 feet to another entrance so it's not as if they can't you know make that left there it, they're just going to continue straight and turn in and make the right and circulate around so even if you cut that off again just another 50 feet it seems there's still another way to get in um, and then that issue has more to do with the parking but I mean there's definitely options and I think you're to your point, you're going to play around with the parking area anyway, so maybe something will evolve through that. I think we have we have so like <laughs> I, I can't even, I, I don't mean to just oh, we have spent right, Brendan, Pete. We've spent so much time redesigning, 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 and I feel like this is what meets all of the 
traffic and pedestrian criteria. I do agree that we'll revisit the parking spaces, but I think this is the plan that we're going to go with as far as the openings and the curb cuts and so forth. And, and we'll certainly revisit these parking. Victoria, you had a question? Sorry. Or yeah. comment? So uh, I guess my question is, if, if this particular the adequacy of this queuing is based on ready coffee's own operations, their own uh, time it takes to make a coffee, which is fashion like donuts, um, what kind of conditions uh, would Brendan suggest or do we need to put on this? Because if this could not be ready coffee one day. It could be something that makes longer artisanal coffee or also makes their own muffins. And then I want to make sure that the queuing is adequate for the size of the building and the drive through use in general and not just base it on ready coffee's operations. Or we need to put some kind of limitation or condition on it saying that you know, if the use changes to one that takes longer than 30 seconds to make a cup of coffee, then, I mean, I don't well, know. Well, doesn't that, right. that would require a new site plan, right? I mean, if right. the use yeah, comes in, it's a new. Because once, once this is built and it's a, it's it's a commercial use, then Department of Health might shut you down if you didn't have adequate septic or this suddenly became a food operation. But but we usually do a change of use permit with the town. This we have to it's a drive-through? It wouldn't be a change of use that we're trying to tell you under our code. I mean, signage would change, but. Yep. Right. So, I mean, this, this probably wouldn't be sufficient for a modern day. It, the size is too small. Mm -hmm. But, like, a McDonald's drive-through needs more space. And so just looking for some guidance on, you know, what would be a sufficient queuing lane for any kind of use and how do we limit this so that we don't get something bigger without board approval in the future. You could tie it specifically to our occupation. Well, we can well, we'll leave that up to you to decide. Yeah, I think it's the same as any other building. But there could be something, you know, with regard to, uh, you know, that if, if the if the trap instead of you know having to come back at a certain time to revisit it, just you know, it could be something on the site plan to say that there, you know, if the if the traffic operations, uh, you know, end up being something that then different that than what was anticipated, that, that that's going to necessitate them to come back to the board. Like a, a certain percentage increase in... Or, or just even, I, I would say even if you saw, even if there were, you know, backups. Wait, and Tad's going to be the one to go out and actually measure that and say this is 20% uh, higher than what they anticipated. Well, like what would be, I'm, I'm asking for what's reasonable. So if we say the new use comes in, it's a different kind of coffee shop, it takes longer. If there's what a 20% increase, then it needs to come back in in peak hours. We can figure that out what down the line. The yeah. Well, I, I think the trigger would actually be the operation, not not the percentage. It would be like if 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 traffic traffic issues were being created, if the queue was spilling out into the feed, you know, in, into the, uh, you know, into the entrance. I think that that's what's going to prompt it. Um, I know, but. but I'm, I'm I, I don't know if it can be written that way, but. Right, but what we need to do is write it so that when and if those issues ever occur, then. Enforcement is possible. That mechanism is going to happen. If you can, you know, once it's built, it can't get back in. True, right. right. And this, I'm just thinking forward. No, no, that's a good point. That's proper planning because you don't know that every business is going to stay the same. And you can always adaptively reuse even a small structure like this because it's already got a built in drive through capability. And then I think, uh, I, I, you gotta, I'm not going to remember the numbers on the top of my head, but I, I believe it was something in the magnitude of the anticipated queue is six and there's either nine or ten. Correct. So there is some buffer built in already. So in looking at the plan and scaling it, if it's one to 30, the car lengths are 14 to 15 feet. Okay, we'll show the measurements of the cars. But I think that they were... They yeah, were I don't know, I don't know what the standard is. I'm just measuring that's what they appear to be. I think we interrupted you, Chris. You had one more uh, comment? Yeah, I'll, I'll, con I'll conclude with, um, I was just trying to brainstorm ideas, um, but I do like the use of the site, and I know it's very challenging. So Thank you. I'm confident that you guys will be able to make it work, and I appreciate the comments from the applicant and our consultant. So thank you. Mr. Garcia. I think everybody said everything. <laughs> no, you can. You, what you should do is say if you agree with something, then you should say I agree, or if you disagree. No, no, I understand. Yeah. Um, Thank you. No, the only only comment I, I would agree with Michael and Chris on buff, bumping that out. I would probably, you know, as a compromise, maybe lose the two parking spaces. You know, because that lines up with this little island here, possibly. That's what I was just thinking too. And. The traffic flow, as far as anybody coming in that main entrance, could you, I would. Could you repeat? Um, when you said, I'm not sure I heard the 
Which um, one? Are you talking the about extending this curb? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Lose those two spaces. Yeah. Lose those two Lose spaces. The, the, the most and making that a. Uh, I'm sure I'm not supposed to be pointing on this TV, but I am. It's okay. I did so it too. <laughs> making this a landscaped island. Yeah. 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 Okay. I, I, I mean, you're going to go back and look at this and take the measurements, but my recommendation is we lose the two uh, spaces, line it up with that island, bump this out. What's and this? This. We're, we're Somehow I know what he's talking about. about. <laughs> <laughs> Move the crosswalk because I don't like the idea of a crosswalk here. in front of the cars there. Yep. And um, I agree with you on your traffic flow. You should have two entrances because if everybody dumped out into that main thoroughfare, it's going to back up. And you're going to then Thank have you. people stopping and making a left. And okay. as far as anybody going through there, they're going to be discouraged because they're going to have to drive through there and make a right out of there when there's traffic coming through there. They're not going to want to do that. It's like at mobile on East Park traffic light. People don't, people try to cut through the mobile, but they can't because there's cars there. And it's a discouragement. We, we don't, we want to stay away from the main I, I don't think, I, I got to tell you, this is intense, and I want to thank you for taking the time to do this because this is a lot of work. I think you're going to have this parking lot all torn up. The only other question I have, which I'm not sure, is is there a, there's two spaces behind the bank. Yes, I think there's actually three. Is there a curbing there? There. There isn't. So, so in other words, fence right they're proposing there, right? a stockade fence. Like, yeah. how's that going to work? Because I, I heard Michael saying, or somebody saying on the board, you know, people cutting through there and making a left and coming out of the other entrance of the bank. Yeah, I could see how that would be a problem. So there's a new little landscaped island here. There's supposed to be a tree on there. There's right. a new but little island. Curbing curbing island. island. No, this is More. a guide rail, like a wooden guide rail. Okay. Uh, to keep, so people can walk through there if they wanted to. You know, we Step don't want to impede because. You know, people that go to the bank park here and they walk over. And so we had a fence originally, and the bank really would prefer a lower. So I think of it as a wooden guide rail. <laughs> I do right? remember that now. It just kind of keeps the cars where mm -hmm. this is a free for all now. I mean, the bank sees well, yeah. this as a significant and improvement. It's continue, but we're I never going to be able to stop people from cutting through I all these the, places. The I mean, people coming out of the drive through are not going to want to go up and then have to make a right and then go out. Well, let's hope there's people in this They're world that still do the right thing. The they might. They, just they are. might. So, I mean, I've seen people cut through there a thousand times, mm -hmm. and um, I don't know how you discourage this because it's a difficult situation. Um, I mean, that, I think that's the only other thing is the garbage. You're going to have some sort of large garbage truck coming in there. I, he, that's why, yeah, that's why we put it here. got it facing out towards the entrance, so he'll pull in with the front of his nose, pick up the garbage, and then he's got to leave. So I guess he'll go around, make a right, and then go out onto Pine Woods. Yeah, Is they can back up and that? go back out, or they can back through and get back onto the main road. However we design the refuse pickup, they'll not do it. <laughs> so <laughs> I can, that can, I can assure you of that. I deal with this all the time with the <laughs> they'll trucks. Do, they'll do it a different way. And do you know if, um, is, is just related to that, do you know if they pick up the garbage all at the same time? I is don't there like because one, there's or did they individually there's different, there's different take care of their of dumpsters? The containers. Yeah, I didn't know if the Knicks had like just overall coordination or if each individual tenant takes care of their own dumpsters. And if they, so then if there's a particular time that they come and it's irrelevant because they come at 4 a.m. in the morning or something, you don't know? Yeah. Okay. Well, I know that. Um, BOE's is owned by the landlord, but the rest of them aren't in the plaza. You, you know what would be kind of nice is when you do move this crosswalk and you have this green area with the plantings here, mm -hmm. is that you made it a little area where you could put a table or something. You know, instead of having this space here at an angle going down to a point where the curb is. Yeah. We you get rid of like that a space and you kind of make it a green area where it's for some tables maybe. I don't know. We can't put a table there. No. Um, well. It would be too, yeah. I think what I we could know. do is there's going to be a lot of extra stone and maybe we can just do some creative things with some stones. But we'll look at landscaping wise what we can Cables do there. Cables seating has its own set of state regulations. So. Yeah, I don't. Other than that, I mean, again, it's a difficult situation. I don't envy the person that's going to have to plow it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that's the way I look at it. That's it. Thank you, John. Um, so, 
<clears throat> Most of what I heard is that there's still concerns about internal circulation, but that's how we have Brendan here and Peter working together along with Dr. Greeley. So I think if, as long as the, the sufficiency of the queue is acceptable to Mr. Fitzpatrick, then I think that that's Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald. Why well, keep saying Fitzpatrick? Oh, because of yes, yeah, sorry, Bill, Bill Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick. Fitz, I guess. Yeah. All right, yeah. Fitz, I fish. <laughs> I've been here for too long. <laughs> At any rate, Mr. Fitzgerald, if he says that that's adequate, then I think that that's at least adequate for me. Um, I'm willing to compromise to see not all five removed, but some removed, whether that's two or three. Yes, but I don't. I, I don't think that you. I think you're inter, you're putting in too much traffic conflicts there. I understand why you want it, but. No, no, I I well, why you said the whole town wants it. Why you think the whole town wants it. No, we're the representatives of the town up here. You're not. Thank you, no, Kelly. I, I understand. No offense. No offense. But we are. I don't think everybody wants it. At any rate, but I think you can have a couple there. We also have had a long-term goal of bringing more green to this plaza. May I point this out? Yeah. This is going to be one of our last opportunities to add green because they're finally changing the parking area that the Sea of McAdam has been referred to over and over again. You can add another tree there, uh, not necessarily tied into a table, but another bench or something so that people could, again, park get out, enjoy. And we'd all like to see people get coffee and go to the credit union or go to the credit union and get coffee in order to have multiple tasks while they're there. So if that would help to have some parking spaces there, then let's do it. Um, I also think that the curb, as I first said, should be bumped northern because you can channelize the traffic better. Um, I do agree. Rob, just based on hearing Mr. Fitzgerald, uh, as well as you guys talking about relocating the crosswalk, he, he relocated it for you. You would lose that parking space, that seventh parking space there, but it does take you to the back of the building, and it does seem to flow better. You're right. I see why you yeah. want to take people there. And it removes pedestrians from walking where people are trying to exit. When, once they leave, they want to get out quickly. Um, so I think that's probably a better idea, too. Then uh, other sort of important issues were, uh, again, we'll just make sure that Mr. Fitzgerald says that it's going to be sufficient with the queue, because that was one of Ann's concerns. Um, the other items that we need to, to sort of resolve, uh, there should be a crosswalk where the uh, opening now is with the parking that's facing the Board of Elections. You just go right into a street there. I think you should probably have a crosswalk for the ac main access, is what we're calling it, because you're trying to direct pedestrians there. Um, you should provide details for the fence, the stockade fence, just a typical thing, as you know, what the dumpster enclosure will look like. We don't have a lumens planned. Uh, if you're going to have TEG just add you uh, as, or say that you can represent them, then that's fine as well. Um, and then last, and this is, I guess, really a tad issue, um, but the site plan that's being shown now is the old Grand Union. It's not the revised BOE building. Should that be shown inside this too? Or I'm not putting on a lot, just something for you to think about, Dad, because I believe that this is show, This is still showing with uh, the old BOE with, with the sidewalk in front instead of the planter, stuff like that. So that's up to you. But it, well, it's labeled you know, vacant building. And it's not vacant anymore. So I was saying it's, it's I thought we, that should be. We can just re relabel it. Just, yes. I was going to say, yes. just have um, Joe in, superimpose or take that off and add a dead layer of whatever the new one is. Okay. I think that'd be better. Um, otherwise, I think you've also heard a lot of support up here for the use and to help reactivate the plaza. It's just a matter of fine-tuning now, and then if we can get these other details shown, then we could consider getting it for county planning. Uh, we were sort of talking as well at the agenda meeting uh, about, how do I say this, the stone wall addition, which you're going to have left over the material to maybe consider putting that as a sidewalk between or between the sidewalk and the queuing area or the green space, whatever, to provide more pedestrian sort of safety. Um, it's not necessarily to put it there. I don't know where you want to put it, but just to show. Where, in other words, you're going to have extra stone material, we know. And when you said repurpose it, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. And where, where would it go? Sure. Going east-west between. Right there in front of it? Or? Right here. Oh. It would along go the, along the main entrance. Along right the main here. entrance. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's what we were talking and about. Because right. And then it could shield a little bit of the look of the queue. Um, the other thing I started thinking about, and it's it's going against my own initial reaction, but by keeping the entrance open so you can take the quick left in and then get into the queue, I believe that we, I think that some of the parking for Mavis is over on that side. So we probably need to allow the parking that's going right toward BOE to be People allowed. For, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Because, um, I've seen a lot of cars, not a lot, but I've seen cars from Mavis parked there too. Particularly if you're dropping off a car and they're going to leave, they park on the other side, they tend to. So that would argue for why it needs to be open. And then 
also, even though the term was used, dump a lot of traffic into the feeder, the, the main access road, you're still only talking about a maximum queue of six to seven, so you're not ever dumping a lot of traffic anywhere now that I think about it. I was thinking about people coming in, say, for the holidays during Christmas season or something, how everything gets packed up, but this isn't, doesn't have a retail portion to that, so that doesn't really, you're not going to do more Seasonal. made us tires during the Christmas right. or Thanksgiving. Right, right, right. <laughs> BOE there, it's not and the BOE, the, the traffic is consistent because that's just training times, and then uh, yeah. and those are mostly at night because people are retired who come there. So uh, I just want to point out that the actual legal crosswalk is right here, and and I know this because we just restriped it. Mm -hmm. We did BOE, so I'm not certain if we want to add another one because it would why do you want to why do you want to open that up then to the, to, to go I know there? I, I don't know that's why I was like well, that, sure. I said I was like if, if we're going to open up to pedestrians there needs to be a crosswalk so it's defined but why are we doing that because we have crosswalks on either end of it yeah so I, I'm, I isn't it open already Kelly I think part of it is open unless it got closed up at least from the aerials it is yeah but, but then but it's we want open but then it doesn't go across the main aisle I just I don't I'm not sure it might be drainage I'm just not sure I want to put a crosswalk there because I don't think you should but if yeah. you have an opening there should be something so it's here. let me see it's if here. it is drainage yeah that might be why it is there might be a structure there okay I'll look yeah. at it and see okay I don't know if uh, Ted you got it on your memo but there were I know when we went out there and looked at it in the field there were some inconsistencies in that area with the mapping there's like a, a light standard there and I think I'm that was sure. going to be impacted yeah, there was, it, <laughs> I think you show two handicap existing spaces I think there's three actually out we'll there. update the plan yes yeah. yeah, so much well, happened that whole yep. project was built in this time frame well, yeah. while we're talking about that I mentioned to you about those dumpsters over by the feeds plus remind me again <laughs> Remember, I told or you I can talk they, to you after they the pulled meeting. them forward. They're now in, when you come out of the Feeds Plus, and you use right in front of this store, they're right there in front of you at the barbershop. Are barber they dumpsters? Shop. For, oh, dumpsters. it's the barber shop yeah, dumpsters? Yeah, they're not pushed back, and there's no, there's no enclosure. <laughs> yeah. so, okay. so while we're, just because we were talking about other things, if I don't let you know that, then it becomes, it drops off my plate. Okay. Right? Something. It's it's a it's. Mm -hmm. I'll look at it. I don't know what. I, I have to go drive by and this look at it. This you'll see. It's on the old plans that okay. it's supposed to be screened. Now I don't know if they didn't do it because they're going to redo Feeds Plus and they're going to do it then. But there's no enclosure for those dumpsters. Okay. So where they where they marked on the uh, building? What is it? Building two and three. Yep. Or, yep. Yeah, three, four, and five. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Pete? You had also had mentioned the other day about uh, trying to spruce up the bank's uh, dumpster. Is that something you want to That wouldn't be their responsibility, but there should be screening for the dumpster because it's visible from Route 9. I'm just, I, didn't know, I didn't know if you forgot oh. to bring it up or you didn't want to bring it up. Or the only time we had this as a site plan, it was a exterior modification when they redid the, the uh, stone cladding on that bank. And we didn't really look at the site plan because I think we, we didn't waive it. We sent it to county planning, but we didn't look at the dumpster. The dumpster is not screened, and it is visible from Route 9. You can see it up in the corner there. It's right here. Yeah. yeah um, that would be, I mean, I think that's, that's not on you. But we should talk to the owner. We should talk to somebody over there. Maybe while all this is. I just don't want to be held to that. Whoever authorizes your signature, I'll call them up myself, just to mention Thank you. That. Because it's we can't. It's not really pertinent It'd be to nice this. to get it well, cleaned up. I mean, they, we are amending the site planning for that. Well, if we but really want to clean up the this plaza, let's go north. This is not this our is, site plan. This is a, this is yeah. a, th I mean, it's a separate yeah. site. I said, if we really, <laughs> we really want to clean up this plaza, why don't we go north? You're touching. Yeah. You're touching the next applicant <laughs> with that rail, the, right? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that's that's another issue here. Is not just is the I mean, this particular own sign type, but you have here, different yeah. owners all sharing. <laughs> Back in the days when handshakes, oh. that's all you needed. So, yes. um, but we're we're a little bit different from that now. So, okay, we'll so just keep you. We'll keep it as soon as you guys yeah, as soon as we can discuss and revise. Then yeah. we'll come back and then get us those details. Let's. I want to go ahead and circulate this now too because yeah, I think it's time. Yeah. Okay, so we'll make the changes, circulate to county planning, and then does Perfect. this need a public hearing? <laughs> yes. Okay, so. Um, yes, unless tech, we, we, we cannot waive public hearings, only tech can recommend. So yeah. is is the planning board authorized to set the meeting as a public hearing when we submit, or do you need to make a motion to schedule, does the board need to make a motion to schedule a public hearing? Some we do it by motion, do right, that. we do, oh really? Mm -hmm. So we can, we can, they can make the motion in the consent of the county planning. Oh yeah, that's what we usually do. Okay. 
we usually set public hearing give the county planning 30 days yeah um, it's just easier but in this case if you want to go and get public uh, opinion started we could start it in two weeks after that okay all right very good okay. you may also want to contact county planning on your own and maybe you know go meet with them yeah before, before yeah. that they get this so you don't I'll, get like a letter like i'll call got, owen like you got on five, <laughs> five page memo <laughs> Um, I did want to bring up one thing. I know we're trying to avoid DOT permitting. Is any of the work that you're, in, you're is, aren't you including including now an entry off the sidewalk that would be in DOT right of way or no? Uh, everything that's shown yours? is um, what do they call it? A minor permit for landscaping. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> at, at the moment. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's what I want to know. Thank you, then, everyone, and have a nice night. And Thank just you. give us a heads up when we're ready to go. Okay. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is a recommendation for a site plan waiver. This is for a garage replacement located at Tim Cromwell Place. Um, this is in the statewide scenic, wait, statewide area scenic, scenic, I'm forgetting what it's called now. Statewide, statewide area of scenic, scenic significance. significance. Sorry. However, this is not visible from either one of the historic sites or from the river directly. We have the recommendation from Ms. Moss. Anybody have any questions? Nope. And this is Vice Chair Oliver's no, resolution. It's just a resolution number 2022-70, whereas a request for site plan waiver has been made to the Town of Hyde Park Planning Board by Christine Brandle to replace a 21 foot by 33 foot garage on the same footprint associated with a single family home requiring a building permit. A variance was granted on January 25th, 2023 by resolution number 22-23Z to change the minimum side yard setback from 10 foot, 10 feet to 3 feet to demolish and rebuild existing garage within the same footprint. And whereas, 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 therefore be it resolved that the Town of <coughs> Park Planning Board hereby waive site plan requirements for the proposed changes as described in the building permit received by the Building Department December 5th, 2022, and per the request of the Planning Board dated December 20th, 2022. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 The next item on the agenda, and the gentleman has been waiting very patiently back there, <laughs> is a recommendation to issue a sign permit. Uh, this is for Smokes for Less, which is actually lo relocating further back uh, with different landlords, actually a different part of the plaza. Come on up. Yeah, cool. Thank Talk you. to us. Tell us about the business. Why you're moving, et cetera. Or maybe not why you're moving. No, I'm just happy. I just wanted to be here and show respect. <laughs> you guys take time out to, you know, do your diligence. And I just wanted to be like, she's there. You know, Cynthia's like, you don't have to be here. And I'm like, no, I want to be here. <laughs> Dad did her job. I want to do my job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Anybody have any questions no. for Mr. So, well, that was fast. Yeah. Are, are you expanding your business? No. Is the I'm, footprint's the same size? Uh, it's bigger than the location we were at. That's what I thought. Yeah. Definitely a lot better. The customers are really, really enjoying I it. bet. And so. do we pronounce your last name Grignon or Grignon? That, that's how you pronounce it, yeah. Well, that's the French, French way. way. And I'm from Louisiana, so that's Grignon. Yeah. Um, at any rate, I, I'll hear add that I was, I think, in the parking lot when Mr. Grignon said, are you the planning board guy from TV? <laughs> 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 I did. His children, you watch us to go to sleep. That's oh, <laughs> just yeah. teasing. We just are really teasing. good for that. Yeah. Reality we are the show. cure for insomnia. <laughs> I'm just teasing. It's very kind. He said, "You guys do a great job," and I was like, "Thank you." My, my, my wife is always like, "What are you doing?" I'm like, "She's doing dishes." I'm like, "I'm just seeing what's going on in the town." <laughs> this is the place to this see what's going on because you yeah. see ahead of time. So, yeah. at any rate, are there are no other questions. Um, uh, I'm excited for the ready coffee. <laughs> Many of us up here are too. And by the way, thank you for st keeping your business here too and oh, no, moving no, it no. within the town yeah, of Hyde Park. It's a great yeah. spot for your business. Yeah, yeah. I'm it excited. It's prominent. It's more prominent, it seems. Yeah. Even yeah. though it's been set back. You yeah. can see it really well. well you can see it really well. Yeah. I, I, no, you can see that building really yeah. well from different from, from both, points. From nine It's nine actually nights. funny because when you're on nine, if it's traffic, I don't ever even look at those buildings because I'm no. concerned with this. Yeah. So I, I agree. And I, I mean, I. Um, the owner, his name is John Urban of the businesses, and when we were looking at it, he was very, he was against this. I've been trying to get him to do it for like three years, and I literally walked him over to the light by the gas station, Sunoco, and I'm like, if you're at this light, you see that business right there. And then I was like, if you're in line, you have that wide visibility. Yep. We might lose some visibility with the ready coffee. I, it's hard for me to really see in the park, which parking lot there? Because they're going to be right in that Mavis parking lot on the left. Where the clock, where the is. clock is. Where the clock tower the, the, is. The, the thing that's green there already, the stone wall. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. So you go, that's going to be the structure. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, so 
I was, but I'm excited. I don't think it's going to hurt our business. No, you're, it's gonna... you'll still see it from the emergency from one. Yeah. I was going to say, when it's, it's, it's going before you even get to the entrance, you'll still see it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. With, the lit, with the lit back, yeah. it's going to even make it pop more. So. Oh, yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So um, this is mine. Yours. Let's see. Resolution number 2023-02. Whereas, 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 now therefore be it resolved that the request of relaxation of letter height from 10 to 15, 10 inches to 15 inches is granted, and be it further resolved, the board hereby recommends the zoning administer, administer issue the signed permits for smokes for less. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Congratulations. Thank you. Very much. <laughs> thank you. Thank thank you. Right. See you again. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you for staying here with us. Yeah. Yeah. The next item on the agenda is key construction office and storage units. I am recused. Ms. Kane, it's so good to see you. Our alternate, our alter, one of our alternates is here. Yay. So Hello. I will exit. Ms. Pardo is also recused. Meeting, right? Yeah. Oh, wait, let me sign this. No, thank you. <laughs> you can't leave until you all your business. Thank you. Good night, guys. Good thank night. You. Thank you. Good night, Michael. Thank you for your leadership. <laughs> Have a seat. All right. Our next applicant is Key Construction. Back for a site plan amendment. Good to see you. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and before anyone asks, I'm just going to answer it. We're still not through DEC. We're close, but we're still not oh, through DEC. Okay. Yeah, so well, it's taken a long time. It's okay. Um, That's all right. So I think everyone remembers this is the old 9G drive-in. And so we previously had approval for self-storage. It was like the garage style self-storage. There was the taller self-storage. And then there was an office um, for the applicant. And so the applicant has decided, um, he relocated to High Park, and he's decided that he's going to um, not build the office here, so he wants to do this as temperature controlled storage. So they'll have all different variations. Wow. So you'll have the garage, you'll have the larger garage style, and then um, so this was the former office, which is now going to be just the temperature controlled storage. And this is the best thing of this whole proposal is just a comparison of the two, mm -hmm. so you can see kind of the de minimis nature. So this was the previously approved building. And you know we had parking here on the end, and we had parking on the side. And so we really just, n none of the other buildings changed. So we just reconfigured the building. We squared it up, got rid of the parking that was down here, um, mm -hmm. which DEC likes, kept this parking. And then we showed um, some other parking over here. That's the change. That's it. So interestingly enough, we were able to keep the scale below the area variance that was granted. So this project received. Um, this is just a wonderful little comparison. Everything is like less, less, less. Um, we had received an area variance for scale for like 66,940 something, and we kept the scale below, so we don't have to revisit that area variance. Thank you for your help. Um, so the building, the, the warehouse is slightly larger, so it was originally 11,000, and now it's 12,705. All the other units stayed the same, 33 parking spaces. Um, so, you know, because we eliminated the, the office, you have less water usage, you have less sanitary, so the septic system is smaller, um, less impervious area, and then slightly less scale. Um, this was just a comparison for the bulk requirements. Again, all of this is on the documents, the site plan that we gave you. We just thought we would highlight it. Um, so everything uh, universally is less. Um, we did a phasing plan, so I think that we had talked about this kind of at the end of the approval last time, and how this was going to be built, which I can go through that if you'd like. Um, this was the scale that we had provided. We did landscaping, uh, lighting, you know, everything has been fully submitted. Um, this is the turtle mitigation plan. So we have had a lot of discussions and meetings with DEC. We've I'm submitted. dying to hear, I'm dying to hear. <laughs> We've submitted, um, it's called a take permit, so we've submitted multiple submissions to DEC. I think we've had two or three site visits. At the end of the day, um, broadly what's going to change is that we have to create sort of a containment area where the turtles have their space, they can't cross over the driveway. 
um, we fence in the whole area, so the whole area is fenced in with a chain link fence that actually has to get buried. So we, we're taking a six foot fence, it'll be five and a half feet because six inches has to get buried under the ground. Um, and this whole area in the back here that's shaded, it's actually expanded, is going to be a turtle nesting area. So it's permanently deed restricted. There can be no development back there. Um, DEC actually has an easement to cross the property and do monitoring. Um, we have to do some monitoring as well. Uh, so it's pretty, pretty extensive. Um, we're, I think at the end of the review, I think DEC has finally reached a conclusion and that they're happy with. Um, there's turtle tunnels underneath of the driveway. So there's lots of, yeah, this is the epitome of the tail wag the dog. Way. I've just, I, it's all new to me. I've done this for 30 years and never had gotten We've this We've only involved. had one turtle mitigation and it was, this is, this it was is so b in bare bones, it was kind of oh, funny. It's a lot. I just things that I didn't even think about. Um, but I think there's two turtle crossings. So there are concrete structures that are not where the wetland is, but you know, so and they kind of get herded, right? So if they start walk, walking and they're far away, kind of like, no, go this way, go this yeah, way. Yeah, we channelize them. Channelization. Yeah. Yes. Right. Turtle traffic. And signage. <laughs> signage. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Arrows, little arrows. I've seen the signage. Little, all, little, little itty bitty this way. turtle signs. <laughs> turtle yeah, crossings. They have turtle. turtle crossings. Yeah. Um, the only difference was we had given you the elevation for the office building. This is just the elevation for the enclosed or temperature controlled self storage. This didn't change the garages and then uh, the little little minis didn't change. So that's the difference. Um, fortunately, we never submitted the plans for final signature. We've been doing extensions and extensions and extensions. So this kind of starts so the process. So timing actually worked, it worked out perfectly. Well, right? Yeah. Right? Yep. Yes, which doesn't usually Always happen. happen. Yeah, no. exactly. I, I really appreciate that um, summary because that's for a little bit of change, it's actually um, it was a lot of work. Kind of extensive, kind of yeah. Kind of touches just a little bit everywhere. It was a lot of work. Yeah. Yes, yes. And um, I'm glad you touched on the scale. We've been living and breathing scale. <laughs> Whew. I, Ted was invaluable in helping us. It's impossible it, to it understand. Was, so, but I all of us, it. we were. I was, and you know, you go, oh, six Walk one, down. sixteen. Oh no, it's. And what's included and what isn't included. Yeah. So yeah. I think. So I know all that'll get cleaned up and. Yes. I, well, yeah, we're we're below the scale, which is good. And that's really, the most important thing. Yes. How, however, we get the final number, perfect. Just be less than that sixty-six thousand. Yep. So we're good with it. Yeah. So thank you. Um, I'm going to uh, start with our consultants and. Uh, Bonnie, why don't you start? Sure. So I had sent an email um, to Kelly. Uh, and uh, Tad was included on that email, but it was some changes just to make so that it can go off um, yes, to county planning. Right. And so we would like to see the, the one building labeled as self-storage or climate-controlled storage because it really isn't a warehouse anymore, just so that it's clear. Um, and then we had some questions with regard to the appearance of overhangs um, were certain doors, were they doors, were they roll-up doors, were they windows? So I think if, in fact, they were doors, you know, we know there might be some sidewalk additions that are needed unless they're windows. And, you know, okay. it was difficult to, to make that determination. And this is on the new building, right? Correct. Yeah. This is on the new building. Or the the yeah. former office. Correct. Yeah, so so again, the appearance, they almost some of them look like a roll-up door, whereas others look like doors. We're not sure if it's a window, yeah, it's so hard to tell yeah. Scale. Yep, okay. yeah, so just to, to clarify that. Um, a couple changes that were made, I don't know, Kelly, if you did touch upon it, the well and the septic did lo were relocated, but it was, you know, swapping them out locations, you and know. smaller. Yeah, and they're not within the, you know, obviously within the adjacent area. Um, so as far as, again, the, the floor plans that go up to the county um, for the larger self-storage building, the new one, again, just check these triangles and the points of entry. This all ties into that same question of what's a door, what's a window, et cetera. And then there's um, a table, and we did finally come up with the scale numbers um, and how they have to change. Uh, so Anne was checking them, I was checking them, you were checking them, everybody was checking, was checking them, them. Tad <laughs> certainly was checking them. Um, so we think we came up with the number, and the good news it is, you know, below um, the variance that was granted. 
but you know, in just looking at those calculations and the dimensions on the plan, um, there was like a written dimension, but then also the actual dimensions, and they weren't entirely matching. Sometimes so they didn't match, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's um, what's going to get um, straightened out. So just some cleanup work, really. Yeah. yeah, we had received, and we're grateful for your comments, but we got them after we submitted, so we just figured we would get everyone's comments and include right. them all at once. Right, so those were, these again, these were just kind of the, ha the cleanup so that, frankly, they're not raised at the county. Okay. Um, and so that we want to get these done, um, adjust the plans, then we can send it off to the county, so there's no question about scale and them picking up essentially the same thing. Okay. Um, and then, I don't know, Tad, if you want to speak to, um, at some point, this, the, the public hearing and your, I believe, letter or memo that you've written for public hearing. On this one? Yes. No, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so I believe Tad, Tad submitted. Tad oh, yes. yes. yeah. stating that she's, <laughs> she's because the are changes are de minimis <laughs> and, and basically, basically the site plan is almost kind of still at, Active the same going through um, she did recommend uh, that she's waving that she would recommend waving the public okay right. perfect thank you <laughs> I, I got confused on that too and then it was like oh here's the letter yes yes so those are those are my comments and then we'll look at the details but again this is just let's you know get it off to the the county and okay. get that going so thank we'll you. get that cleaned up and get it back unless there's any significant comments to you and then we can get it over to the county. right in addition right. To right. Okay. The planning okay. Tad, did you have any other additional comments? Oh, okay. Thanks. <laughs> Mr. Sotero. Yes. You know, I have one comment, oh, or one question, actually. So DEC is doing a take permit. Did they actually find a turtle? After all is said and done, or why? I think there's known, it's known habitat for the turtles. Okay. So that's why we have to do the take permit. Okay. Yeah, I was surprised that that's the direction ultimately they went in. Yeah, but, me too. And that, that, so I almost thought that they must have found something, but that's not necessarily. That area has, uh, is yeah. legendary for being prime habitat. So rumor yeah. has it, if anyone knows this, so we know rumor that the gun club years and years and years ago used to have turtle races. And so when they were done with the turtles, they would just let them go. And that's how this place became so populated with turtles. Oh, wow. so that's, that's a great story. I mean, if you story. think about it. Yeah. Even if it's not true. Even it's LaGrange, great. it's the same thing. They had the, the um, shooting range over there, and that's where you, all the turtles are. So, like, years and years and years ago. That's, well, that's what rumor, rumor like has it. it. Uh, good story. <laughs> hey. Thank you for that. Could what be. people do for entertainment. A little bit of history. Yes. <laughs> Hyde Park legend. <laughs> yeah, right. uh, I don't really have any comments. Um, I think that the footprint is generally the same. It is. Right. So yeah. there's no change to, you know, the swip or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, maybe the narrative in the SWIP may have to be updated when we get the final, just if it, if okay. it talks about, you know, office versus yeah. the where, I, right. I don't yep. know, right. just have, right. just have them, just have them take a look at it, but yep. there's nothing going to change with the calcs or anything. So okay. I don't, I don't, I don't. So, so kind of like the, um, the plan that we were just looking at for the Hyde Park Town Center where, where if it says Grand Union, yeah, just, right. just update right. it to be. Yeah, so if there's anything that's, that's got to be updated point. in, you know, the SWIP just before we, you know, we, have, we haven't signed off on it yet. No, we haven't. Mm -mm. No, so just, right. you know, the final one that we're going to uh, sign have, off on. Well, I don't know. I assume, I don't know if Al, no, we'll have, you know, the deputy, like, supervisor sign the MS4. It would be a right. conflict for Al. Yep, okay. So, okay. No, that's it. I don't, I don't have anything. Thank you so much. Start to the left, Anne. Uh, I have no comments or questions, thanks. Wonderful. Mr. Waters. Yeah, the only thing it, on the elevations, if they could put the length of the building. Sure. Because that yes. seems to be something, I don't know, they don't like to put sometimes. But I'm, I'm assuming that the, the break in the building is gonna be the awnings, is that, if it, if it is over that 100 foot, I mean. The other ones had entries and things like that. I know that the the uh, scope has changed now of what the use is, yeah, and that it's not really visible from the road. So I'm okay with things because it seems like, but but it just would. I just want it noted that the you length. Know, I need to know what the lengths are. Okay. That's 
Sorry. Thank you, Mr. Waters. And I think that kind of feeds into our whole discussion of scale and scale and knowing and understood. knowing like which which building is the ninety five and which one is the one thirty five and you know. Okay. I think that just all Makes sense. meshes well. Okay. Thank you. Miss Kane. I have no comment. <laughs> Well, thank you, <laughs> Mr. Oliver. I have no comments either. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Here for me. No. Okay. So um, I think where we stand is you've got you've got the comment letter to make the updates, and then when we get the updates, and we can refer it to DC Planning. And so what we'd like to do is, um, if there's no other comments, I'd like to have somebody make a motion so that we can. Refer the key construction office storage units amendment to Dutchess County Planning under 239M once the revised scale corrections are received and the and the updates to the plan. I'll make I'll that make motion. Sure. Thank you. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes. Very well. So if you can turn that around, then Cynthia can get that over to uh, County planning. planning. Yep, and they can make their. Um, should we just uh, wait until we? I guess what next planning board meeting we would be on. So there's no other comments really, other than the comments that we received. Um, would we want to appear? I was trying to think. We would have to appear back in Mar the March first meeting. I would think so. Okay, yeah, so we'll I just think coordinate so because with Cynthia. Whenever you get the materials into us and we refer to county plan, Plans it's 30 will go days. Out 30 days. Yep. Yeah. Okay, that sounds um, good. But I also need, sorry, I missed this one. I need someone to make the motion that we are waiving the public hearing for key construction office storage units site plan amendment. I'll make that motion. Thank you. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so now that's done. Thank you very much. You're welcome. So, yeah, get the materials in, we'll get those. Forwarded over to county planning. Everything by then, I'll be to everything all comes. It's all going to flow. All Hopefully, all DEC. Yes. <laughs> the permit. Yep. Thank you. you. Get the DEC, the everything town, the ZBA. Everything will be taken care of. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Um, can I have a motion to adjourn? So, so moved. Second. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, everybody. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for... Uh,